Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Bradley Harrelson at the Second Swing Talking Stick location in Scottsdale. Bradley is a master club fitter here and a professional golfer. And so we wanted to have Bradley on while we're down here and look at the clubs that you're using. So Bradley, first tell us about a little bit about your professional golf career and you know really what you're looking for out of your clubs. Well, I started in 2015, kind of in 2015 right out of college, played Division II college. You know, wanted to play and kind of ch chase a gene. Yep. Um, you know, did that for a couple of years, qualified for U.S. Open sectionals, played in a bunch of different open events and little events down here, and then kind of got into the custom fitting golf retail, really started to enjoy it. So now I kind of split my time between sure. playing and, and custom fitting. Sure. I know that's kind of a, you know, a, a semi-popular route that a lot of pro golfers are, are doing because I, we know about that grind and know and we respect the heck out of it, you know, it's players difficult. in your position. So, uh, all right, we got some really cool, unique head covers here to, to uncover here. So <laughs> let's start with the biggest one at the top. What's okay. in the bag? Uh, so driver, I actually play ping G425 LST. Now it is a 10 and a half degree okay. on the head. Yeah. Now I had ping spec it out to be a 10 degree exactly. Okay. So the 10 and a half will actually sit a tad bit open for me at just neutral settings. Oh, okay. So instead of having to use the weight, you know, it's already a little bit of a fade bias, but I just like it visually to sit a little bit open. Okay. Um, playing a Ventus TR6X. So the new model for this year, mm -hmm. I've always kind of played Ventus very well. I played blue uh, for a couple of years, got a little higher launching, tried black, was a little too stout for me. Yeah. Came out with this, fell right and loved right away. Sure. Uh, grips, all my clubs, besides my 7 wood, which we'll get to because I haven't changed it yet. Yeah. New decade midsize. Went to midsize this year. My hands just have really long fingers. So yeah. I tend to I tend to wrap the, my hands around that a little bit too tight. Yeah. So going to midsize did help out. I'm actually the same exact way I got midsize. So yeah. uh, it works perfect. All right. Moving down to the fairy woods now. Uh, what do you have in the bag there? So currently, 3 wood, Callaway Rogue LS 3 wood. So okay. low spin model. Yeah. Got a couple of reasons why I went with this model. One, and it's still a high spin player. I, I, I tend to, you know, want to have something off the tee I can use. Yeah. Not as much into par fives. I'm still kind of tinkering with that a little bit. Um, not as long as some of the guys I play with, so I tend to be posi positional type player. Sure. Um, the other thing is full face scoring lines. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a visual thing. I, yeah. I can't look down when there's nothing kind of sitting there in the middle. Right. And, and again, this one sits just a little bit open. So that it kind of just fits my eye, yeah. looking looking down there. Sure. In there though, Ventus Black Seven X. Yeah. For some reason, the fairy wood just it suits it better with the feel. I think it's the weight that we went with, about a D three swing weight on okay. there. Okay. It's a good matchup if, if I'm not having issue, if I'm having issues with my driver that day. Yeah. So it's a good secondary T T club. Sure. Again, new decade, a little yeah. different color, as you can tell. I kind of like some different. Yeah. Colors oh, of there. course, of course. So. Now we got to move down to, I think for a lot of golfers is that interesting part of the bag where yeah. you can kind of bring in maybe different options or a lot of different routes are possible. So what do we have after your three wood? So typically my gamer is G425 crossover. So I'll play this as a two iron, um, off the tee club, positional par five layups. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm still looking at position there. Yeah. Um, with the fairways down here in Arizona typically being a little bit more firm. Yeah. That's where I tend to you know, kind of look to this club. Yeah. Um, again, you can see Ventus. Mm -hmm. it, it's my go-to. Yeah. Um, 9X in this hybrid. And again, I'm stiff. I like a stiff, a stiff shaft in there. Yep. It's just a boardy feel. Yeah. Um, the other things that I do carry, though, I'll tear with me on a car. I'll take with me in tournaments. I have a Ping G410 7 wood. It's the only club in my bag for woods that doesn't have Ventus in it. It's yeah. a hazardous 90, 90 gram 6.5 TX in this bad boy. Uh, this is high launching. If I'm trying, if I actually have a shorter course, yeah. I'll carry this in the bag because okay. I will be going for par fives. Yeah. Um, and this just allows me to get that ball up instead of hitting my three wood, which for me, there's no way I'm going to hold the green with three right. wood. Right. Sure. Um, so I typically put that in for some shorter courses that are things I need to hold greens with. Yeah. The other one I got, hybrid Rogue Pro 2. Um, it's got the same kind of shape as my LS3 wood, mm -hmm. smaller package, rough courses, courses yeah. that got a lot of rough. Oh, sure. Um, something I, you know, it's it's similar ball flight to my, my two iron, 
But if I need to get out of some rough, that I have a little bit more difficulty with. Yeah. This is great for getting out of that rough that the sole design they have on these is a little bit more of a, like a rounded yeah. kind of knife type yep. edge to it. Again, Ventus 9X. There you go. So a lot of Ventus at the top of the bag. Yeah. Uh, besides that seven wood, uh, which by the way, that the color on that shaft <laughs> is really cool because I was looking at it and you got green. Kind of moves up to moves blue purple. and purple even. So kind of, it kind of pops. Yeah. So um, irons now. Yeah. Uh, I see a new bottle from Ping that's I think about a year old now at this point. It is. Um, thing is, so this this is the second. This is the model that I went to after iBlades. I yep. played iBlades for three years. It took me long time to get out of them. They finally told me they couldn't make me another set, so <laughs> uh, I kind of had to find a new change. Yeah. So got into uh, I-59s. I got four through pitching wedge in here. Um, pretty standard, dynamic old X100. Yeah. Now, neat thing about these is X100s from Ping, I don't have to get tour issue. They are sorted over there for their quality control, so they're actually the same shafts. Oh, okay, very so, nice. You know, I could take the, instead of having the, the shaft bands on here, I, could, I typically will take these off. I just haven't yeah. been playing so good, so I left them on. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> Why would you change it? Yeah, so they're high launching, nice high spinning ball for me on the irons. Mm -hmm. um, just a nice upgrade from the eye blades I was playing. Sure, sure. Now down into the short game, yeah. wedges here. I see uh, more ping, it looks like. Yeah, more ping. Um, these Glide 4.0 wedges are great. Um, I've kind of always been a ping wedge player. Ten, kind of moved around with a couple things, finding the right lofts. So my lofts are 50, 55, actually using a 54 degree head to add some bounce to it, and a 60 degree. Okay. I kind of jump around in bounces because yeah. I didn't also go to a couple of different grinds. So 50 standards, 50 12, um, fill my full shots. I don't want to sure. worry about it. 54 actually has what's called a lob combo grind on it. So I added bounce to it and then they kind of took some off on the back. Okay. So it kind of gave me some heel and toe relief while taking that back leading edge while still maintaining some options there for the middle, just full shots without laying it open. Okay. So kind of allowed me to get some creativity with that. Sure. Uh, my 60 is the TESOL. So yeah. having shots around the green in the desert here, it's it's very bare. It, yeah. it can be tight, it can be bare. No, there's no bounce on this. Yeah. And it just allows me to kind of get right underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I play around with a lot of different shots. So this just gives me variety here. Yeah. Um, actually on this, I also do have a grind. They had a lead edge grind. Um, with them being a little steeper of a player, typically you would see a little bit more bounce on your wedges. Um, the trick is if you do a, a rounded leading edge, it allows you not to get stuck as much. Yeah. So I kind of figured out a couple ways that I can use a low bounce wedge while actually having sure. um, my same swing there. Yeah, and um, I think the big thing that golfers should take away too, and I, you know, we've preached this on the channel a few times, but it's with the wedges having different bounces is actually recommended because yeah. you know, you're gonna hit different shots, you're gonna, a lot of people maybe open the face with one club or you know a couple clubs. Maybe they have to hit a different, maybe a lower shot with their, you know, lower lofted clubs. You're also things play like different that. Different courses, too. and you're gonna play different courses with different terrain, different you know types of grass, yeah. things like that. You don't always have to use the same club to hit you know hit chips and short yeah. shots. You, some people do, and you know they they fit their game around that. Now yeah. shaft wise, uh, I went dynamic gold two ratio black. I mean, yeah, I gotta make it a little spicy at the bottom oh, of the yeah. bag. Oh um, yeah. One of the things that I do is I keep my same X100s in my 50 because I don't tend to hit half shots. I don't hit the, tend to hit pitch shots with this. Okay. I'm hitting full shots, so I keep it as close to my irons as I can. Yeah. I go to S400s in my my shorter clubs to get a little more feel. Sure. Um, okay. So wedges, pretty simple there. Fun though. All right. Lastly, we're going to the greens. What are you rolling in putts with? Well, right now. I'm kind of working with two. One has been my gamer for a long time. Then I've actually worked with one of our other fitters, Mike Bibiano down here. And he's kind of got me working with some shorter putters. So with him, I've been working on with an old school Ping Redwood. This is a D66 model, black satin. Mm -hmm. This is what I gamed in high school. Oh, really? I mean, okay. I went back to something very familiar, very comfortable to me right. shape wise. Mm -hmm. um, but we actually went down to 32 and a half inches. Um, Okay. It's my arms are really long. Yeah. And it just allowed me to get more fluid through my stroke. Um, it's so much better. Yeah. Uh, I just feel more comfortable that way. So, you know, even though I'm stand, you know, I'm a 5'11 tall fella, it, <laughs> 
my arms are long, so I got to fit the putter around. Yeah, there. you know, sure. it's, a, it's a weird change, but it's been very productive okay. for me. Okay, interesting. The one probably I was just a, probably not a, a fitting, to, you know, aspect that you even maybe considered. I mean, maybe you know, speaking with Mike, I'm sure really kind of opened your eyes to that. It's it's very much has. Now this morning, actually, I, I cut my old school my other gamer down. Now this is PLD. This is one I had custom built for me over at Ping. Went through their process. Mm -hmm. Got almost exactly what I, you know, pretty much exactly what I wanted to um, in terms of design. Mm -hmm. It has top line sight because I am a very, I'm, I'm a left eye dominant player. So top line sight really is helping me align the ball. Now, to, I did now cut it down to 32 and a half inches. So this is going to go back in the bag now um, just because it's, it's been my baby for the last couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> so how about that, that, that ping PLD fitting process? Yeah. I know that's something. Um, that I've heard a lot about and I've, they've heard it's just awesome. So talk to me just a little bit about what that was like for you. Yeah, so the, the custom fitting t process is over there with Jeff Thomas over at Ping. Um, brings you in, you know, you have a discussion. You're looking at fitting plus custom options. Yeah. You know, they want to make sure that you get into a putter that's fit correctly for you. Now, we've kind of changed my fit just ever so slightly because some new things I've learned from Mike. Yeah. But going from there, I was able to get the right grooves technology. So I have what's a shallow groove on here versus no milling at all versus an insert. Yeah. And it just allowed me to get a better feel for long putt, short putts. Um, you know, I'm two degrees flat on this as well. Okay. I'm always kind of be, regardless of length, I'm always two degrees flat. Yeah. It, that's their fitting process. I don't have much rotation in my stroke either. Yeah. So this putter is going to be face balanced for mm -hmm. you. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of getting this back in the bag yeah. versus the, the Redwood, which, you know, I'll put both, kind of both. Yeah. This is going to make me a little bit more comfortable than even the high school putter was. Yeah, sure. So it's, it's been really, it's going to be a fun process to get this one back in the bag. Sure, you know, sure. Got to have the fun head covers on it. Oh, yeah. Got to have a little fishy on the other one. And then a good old-fashioned <laughs> Karsten yeah, on there. I, so you're kind of a, you have a, an affinity for these different head covers over here. So it's, <laughs> got, it's got a cool appearance to it. So it does. Um, and then I guess the last thing I is, let's see, I do play Cali Chrome Soft Triple Track. Oh, okay, very nice. Uh, so I do. Well, I don't use Triple Track on any of my putters. But uh, you've got it on putters. the golf ball. I have it on the golf balls. Um, it's actually kind of odd not to have it on the golf ball right now. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've grabbed a couple balls that haven't had the logo on it. And I've, I've struggled, actually, because yeah. I've got used to the, the lines and actually lining it up. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good low spin ball. Really happy with this. Played, uh, played Pro V1 X for a long, long time. Yeah. Went to this, found it's better than the wind for me. Really? Okay. Especially down here when it gets a little breezy. Sure, sure. Interesting. Yeah, I and mean, we've heard a lot of good feedback on that that triple track technology well, on here track and, and how great. it helps with your kind of vision and, and alignment. So, um, well, Bradley, this has been awesome. Yeah. Uh, a lot, you know, deep dive into your bag. And I think it, it shows the importance too of the, the attention to detail that a pro will have uh, in designing their bag. And it, it's maybe something that can help golfers that are watching this as well to oh, look definitely. at the details of their bag and how something so small or maybe have extra options at the top of the bag with that hybrid and, and three iron gap, things like that can be a really be big benefit for your game. So I mean, no, in, in golf, a small detail is a big, is a big detail. Yeah. Right. You get a big detail and that's not as much, but you can get in the very little bits of it and it can make a huge difference in mm -hmm. somebody's game. There are no small details because no. the small ones are big. So yeah. uh, Bradley, thanks for joining uh, yeah. and stopping in and, and telling us about your bag. Uh, and we wish you the best of luck in your future competitions here. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasure.